Ryan here, and I'm here with a very special collaboration with Shad from Shadversity. I had spoke to him about his latest videos that I was intrigued by because he actually tested Lars Anderson's idea from depictions, historical depictions, that the Europeans shot on the right side of the bow, much like the Middle Easterners or the Far East, with the three finger pull or two finger pull that you normally see in western archery. Most people say this is impossible, but after I spoke with him, uh, he decided he wanted me to run some special tests. So I think what we'll do is we'll hand off to Shad because he's the one who can explain this. And uh, without further ado, here's Shad. Hey old friend, Shad here. And recently I've made a video showing that you can actually shoot an arrow on the right side or outside of a medieval longbow with the classic three finger or Mediterranean drawer. Some people actually said that was impossible. They weren't even able to draw the arrow back. Well, no, it is possible and you can actually be phenomenally accurate with this technique. But now I want to explore this technique further, specifically to show people that you can also use it on a higher poundage war bow. My own bow reaches the war bow classification, but I want to see this done in even higher poundages, getting really up there. And Thrand was generous enough to offer to help me out in this regard. Thrand, as you might have mentioned already, has a bow that is over 100 pounds in draw weight. And it's going to be awesome to see him shoot in this method. So apart from finding out if Thrand can shoot on the right side of the bow with a Mediterranean grip on a 100 pound bow, uh, it's also really going to be interesting to see if he notices any different effect on tilting the bow a little bit to the right and drawing back the way that I was showing, because I found it easier uh, to draw a heavier bow that way. But not only me, me longbows also tried it out and found it was easy to draw back a heavier bow and it didn't put nearly as much strain on his back and it didn't hurt him and he has a bad back. And so it'll be really interesting to see if Thrand uh, notices any difference as well. Thank you so much Thrand for offering to test this out for me. I can't wait to see the results. What I want to do briefly is to show you a couple of shots with my own bow, with my target, as you see down there. And to demonstrate you actually can shoot this way with a moderate level of accuracy, I'm still getting better. I'm only just starting out with this side, so I'm not like pinpoint yet, but I'm accurate enough already. And my arrows are incorrectly weighted for not only the exact weight of this bow, the draw weight, but also for shooting on this side, because this is one of the interesting things or challenges that you might find is that Arrows that are generally correctly weighted when you are shooting on the left side are incorrectly weighted when you're shooting on the right. Because now when you're releasing the string, the release pushes the uh, string just a little bit more that way and that affects the flight of the arrow. But the easiest way to fix this is just to recalibrate the type of arrows that you are shooting with your bow. But in a warfare situation, most archers didn't have that luxury. The arrows were mass produced put on a massive cart by the king or whoever was doing it, and then handed out amongst the archers. And so they had to learn how to shoot with incorrectly weighted arrows. And they would be running into some interesting problems, but you can still be accurate enough even with incorrectly weighted arrows, because it's all a matter of technique. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this target seems like 25 meters uh, distance could be could be 30, uh, it's hard to tell, but I'd need to measure it properly. I don't have like a oh, measuring tape that reaches that long. But anyway, it's at a decent distance, okay? So it's not like I'm standing too close. Right in the head. And so I'm not drawing to a set position. And so because of that, my groupings are pretty wild at the moment because I'm just trying to do instinctive aiming. Both eyes open, looking at the target, and I'm still learning how to get it. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong. Right in the red. You see, even the wobble can be adjusted for in your sight picture. And again, the wobble is because wrong arrows. All right, that one was really interesting. I had actually two solid groupings there. One on the target, one just the bit. And so I was clearly doing something differently with the right grouping as opposed to the left. But what's important to notice about that is uh, you wouldn't be able to get, you know, consistent grouping like that if 
something was happening to make the arrows fly off in any direction, you wouldn't be able to group consistently like that. But because I am shows that you can get consistent accuracy with this style. Not bad, bit of a tighter grouping, just uh, except that one stray one. Ooh. This is really interesting. That is my tightest grouping yet. Now, if this style of shooting was inherently inaccurate, okay, and because I remember I'm shooting poorly weighted arrows to my to the bow. They're generally hitting the shaft and getting a bit wobbly. But if you couldn't compensate for that in your aim, that type of grouping I just did should technically be impossible, okay? Now, so what this means is I'm becoming more consistent with my draw position, the way I'm holding it, and my release, so the arrows are all landing in the exact same area. Now all I have to do is adjust my sight picture a little bit to the left, a little bit down, and uh, center it and it's gonna get much better. So hopefully this will actually prove you can get accurate shooting this way with poorly weighted arrows on top of that. Uh, as to uh, perfecting a technique to uh, compensate, I'm gonna be practicing on that as well. I'm only just starting out. And so there we go. I think I've been able to show you, you can get pretty darn accurate with shooting even poorly weighted spined arrows on the right side with a Mediterranean grip. But as I mentioned before, my bow is about 70, 75 pounds. Let's see what Thrand is able to show us with his 100 pound bow. A big thank you to you Thrand for offering to test this out for me. I can't wait to see what your results are. So over to you, mate. This is our brand new mannequin. And you can tell it's made out of AVS style plastic, much like the plastic barrels, and it's really tough. The thing is, this isn't going to be accurate as it would be if we were shooting in the ballistics gel, which we're going to cut this out and make a ballistics gel cavity or container so it's going to be better than ever. If we get a few holes in it, I should still be able to work with it, but I would like to avoid that. And something Shad would probably appreciate because he loves his gambesons and you can see he wore his gambesons. Uh, I'm using gambesons here. Now, this is probably not total period gambesons. I have some trigger cloth in here. I do have real linen. This is a coarsely woven linen that I've used before, but it's heavily damaged. So it's been doubled over and over. They're actually sacks, uh, but doubled over and over to act as a coarse woven linen with a tightly woven trigger cloth, a couple of layers of that in there. And then I've got a packing blanket. Now I know packing blankets don't stop much and they do pretty much simulate a lot of modern padded gambesons that you buy where they just have batting in them. So between this and that, it's kind of overkill. If I were to quilt the heck out of this, it would probably be about a half inch thick. But I think that's very plausible uh, if it was just over a chest area or something and you were wearing standalone gambesons. So what we're trying to do, it's not a true gambeson test per se, but we're trying to see if we can protect our mannequin, our new uh, warrior, from harm with textiles and maybe catch the arrows. I think the, uh, it'll be an interesting experiment and I think Shad will love it. As you know, we have Gambeson under there, which I'm sure Shad's going to totally appreciate that. And uh, this is a practice point. We haven't had a practice point go through Gambeson before. Uh, it'll probably bounce off. It's gonna be my first attempt at this. And uh, my arrows aren't specifically made for this bow either. They don't even knock on the string very good. So that might cause some problems. I don't know, I'm gonna give this the best shot I can. I have my GoPro on too, so we'll get to see the arrow drawn in the bow that way and what it looks like from my perspective trying to aim and hit with it when I release the arrow. Uh, what else can I say about it? I put some mail on it because there's the gambeson's thinner up there and we really don't want to tear the new mannequin up more than we have to. So this is so much an armor test, but if it does hit the mail, that's what it does. If it hits the gambeson, it hits the gambeson. But it'll give us an effect. We'll get to see what happens. And mostly this is to see if we can hit a target. The other thing is this is a shorter distance than Shad was uh, doing it. It's more of a point blank range. This is not over 30 feet. It's in between 30 and 25 feet, something like that. That's what I normally use in my backyard. It's much safer. We have the shed as a backdrop and I also have thick plywood behind it. So the arrows should be stopped. There shouldn't be any major problems. And uh, as for being dangerous, I doubt it. But let's go ahead and we'll start off and see what happens with a practice arrow. Uh, this bow here, the other thing I need to say, it's an 85 pound draw at 28 inches and 105 pound at 32 inches. This is enough if I pull it to 32, which I normally do every time, 
to prove the point that over 100 pounds can be done that way if I can pull it off. So let's get going and see what happens. Oh, I'd say that was a hit. But I noticed with my aim and the cheek, I hit my cheek. I don't know how bad my cheeks hurt, but I can feel it. The string hit my cheek. Let's see if we can determine where we hit it. How bad is my cheek? Did I cut it? No, just looks like somebody slept you real hard. I didn't expect that. Practice hours aren't known to go through gambeson like that, so I'm going to use a long bodkin, which would be great for mail uh, to spread the rings or slip in between the rings. But hopefully it'll stick in our gambeson deep enough to actually show where we hit because we were unable to see. Although that was a dead on hit, it wasn't very difficult to do. It did slap me on the cheek a little bit, not too bad. I'm gonna try to avoid that this time uh, and not have me hit so close. Uh, the other thing I want to say is I have this on. It's got a long handle and this is a uh, dirk or short sword that very well could have been used during Agincourt. So it is not getting in the way. And that's one thing that I think Shad was trying to make a point of is that you could wear a sword with it and still use this style. I don't know if I hit the gambeson, but I would say that was a good hit, just a little lower than I expected. You want to aim into the privacy with you? Oh, I was hoping not. I don't know if I hit gambeson though. I think I did. I think I did. We got gambeson or this would have gone completely through our mannequin. Let's find out. Pull up the shirt. It didn't go very deep, so he's not injured very badly. That's good for us because we're trying to protect our mannequin, believe it or not. I like the little bit. Yeah. But we can pull up his shirt. Yeah, we went through yep, Gambison. Gambison. And uh, let's see how deep it really went into it. Remember, that's about a half inch thick of Gambison, so he only got a little over an inch into him. He probably would live. So our Gambison, I'm sure that Shad will be happy to know he would have survived with his Gambison on. So you would too, hopefully, Shad. Still hanging a hair to the right. But in this case, his cloth caught it. Did you get a thick cloth? No. It's just in cloth. He is perfectly safe on this one. But it's still fairly accurate. And still would have scared the snot out of him. <sighs> Another near miss to the right. Ooh, interesting. He's not wounded, but it did go through the mail on the back side by itself. This is awfully close to, so the arrows aren't stabilizing as they would for Shad. As you can see here, let's show this in case anyone would like to see that I did aim a hair off. It's a bit different aiming from that side. Other than that, the arrows seem to be flying true and straight. Add to it the and they have extreme force. You've got to take into account you don't normally aim this way, so if you were practicing that way consistently, you may already have the under... Uh, actually taken into account that and be used to it. Most certainly. I can see getting more and more used to it as I go. And this is why this is known as the net of war. I am now unable to retrieve my arrow. It's giving me a very bad time. So even if a guy was wounded, you would have to get the arrow out through the mail somehow. Ooh. We hit the mail, I think, did we not? Mm -hmm. And what it's done Ooh. is our bodkin bounced out. That was that the mail? Yeah. Pretty sure it hit the gambeson and it bounced out and our arrow went over the target. So that amount of gambeson, which is extreme, remember I told you this is way thicker, this gambeson's way thicker than you would normally use on your mail, stopped our bodkin, 
I don't think he got injured through that. I can't tell unless it was here. Was it here? No, I believe it was there. Maybe it was here. I don't know. Something hit that. But when we look here, whatever happened, we had our arrowhead bounce back, and at this point I'll have to re-glue this before we continue with this one. Our points damaged somewhat. But uh, we did, we were able to hit it. Once I start getting more used to the aim, I'm having less and less problems and it's easier to draw. Let's try this with a heavier pound bow. That's what I would say. Let's go up to a heavier pound bow. And our Gavison's doing its job, even though it's extremely thick and you might be, in this weather right now, it's, what, 80, 90 degrees? 80 degrees. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to wear, yeah, a full uh, Gavison of that right now. But I mean, if somebody was shooting one of these at you, maybe, maybe. Now I bring out my beast. This is the 110 pound draw at 28 inches, which no, I don't want to disillusion you that I'm going to get all the way up because people say they're using a 130 pound bow to 32 inches, which is 130 pounds. But I can probably get to 28 or a little past, so this will definitely go up in the pounds over the other bow that's on a, only 105 at 32, which I was getting 32 inches, about 32 every time. So this time, we've already tested what Shad wanted to see, but this is going to be more of a challenge for me because if I put more into it, I can draw it farther back, uh, reaching higher poundage. So if this technique helps me, I should be able to get more out of it than I normally would. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Man, that string hurts. That time, I hit my, my arm more than I expected due to the way I drew it, uh, a little above this. So I'm not gonna lie, the techniques take some getting used to. I could have probably controlled that or maybe had a little bit further uh, leather up. But y'all, that stung. But that was a good hit. See if we can see where we hit it. I'm gonna say it hits somewhere in this region. Look like it hit here, correct? There was a hole punched in it. But I can't tell if that was already there because this is a very old uh, gambeson that's been shot with arrows and uh, done before. But yeah, oh, that definitely felt that one. Let's try it with a razor head maybe. This is a leaf shaped razor head or actually a low profile leaf shaped sharp sharpened tip. A uh, good way of looking at it. The Vikings swore by them with the lozenge-shaped heads for cutting through male early periods. So we don't believe they probably wore as much gambeson as we have under here. Uh, but uh, they swore that they cut through anything anybody was wearing and they were excellent. This is fairly sharp. We've got a nice edge on it. I'm going to try this with the 130-pound bow and hopefully I don't smack the arm quite as hard. That was one heck of a thump. I'm going to be feeling that for a while. But this is me getting used to this new style. So I have to admit that it was easier to draw but I didn't expect that kind of uh, string follow through, that hurt. So I've got this turned up a little bit more, hopefully it won't hit me the same way. And let's see if we can get this into our actual gambeson. Oh! That was a bit high. Most certainly. I think rings went flying. Might want to try that again. That was a bit high. Oh! <laughs> Straight to the arm. Straight to the arm. I'm hitting further over now. Oh. All right, that was a perfectly straight shot. I've gotten more used to this now. 
and I hit right over the body with the razor head or the uh, actual one that normally cuts through, but I've used so much gambeson, I think that it didn't make it. We're looking to see if it's in here or if it's on the ground, but we weren't able to re-secure it, so we actually fired it or released it. I shouldn't say fire because this is not a uh, gun, but we released it uh, with a slightly loose head just fit on there taut. So when it bounced, we've lost the head. We're going to have to look for it so there'll be no more razor shots, but that was a dead-on shot into the body. You can clearly see. So the gambeson stopped the head, but I think the head did take some damage from hitting certain things and especially the male one time up here. So I think it was not sharp anymore. So he's alive. And I think, Shad, you'd be alive too if you were wearing this. You should wear gambeson. I just come up with that idea. Oh, wait a minute, you already had it. Let's get going. We're gonna do the long bodkin here. Oh! Wow, right on. I'm finally getting it, finally getting it. Our gambeson is most certainly protecting it. We can see it hit here probably. But the gambeson, as I suspected, in an overdone fashion, which it could be done much better if you were to layer things properly and knew your textiles. They had gills that made gambeson and knew how to make special weaves and to make the gambeson itself. Historically, just like any other thing, like a male monger or somebody who made mail that knew their, their art, there were artisans who made gambeson and us overdoing it today with the bounce it has, of course the mannequin's a little harder than ballistics gel, but no more harder than going through some soft bone or something or cartilage. It's protecting it. Now, I admit that see, people will say this was not on here properly maybe, because we've been having some problem with the heads today, not having time to re-adhere them, but it would still have enough force it should go through if it could. Now, there may be some wounds under here and we're gonna address them and find out right now, but I think we've done enough experiments for today to prove that it's certainly plausible. It's easier to draw more weight to me, I've noticed. Your sword doesn't get in the way, and uh, since it's certainly doable, and there was no set uh, dogmas or anything about how you were supposed to use a bow early period, somebody did it and they had to do it. And they must have done it quite frequently to have artwork that specifically, no matter what side you're looking at, they put it on the right side, just like the Middle Eastern, just like the uh, Asian cultures, like uh, the Japanese and the Chinese. So we're seeing it right here today. It's working with this bow. And I remember having somebody have an argument with me saying that a long bow is so much different than a Yumi because the Yumi has to be shot in that manner, has to be released in that manner, but they use it. I bet you, you could use the traditional Western method, put it on the other side and use the Yumi just like you would with three fingers like I'm doing here, but as a Western bow. And I bet you, you could, like I just did, if you want to use a thumb grip, you could probably do that with a long bow as well if you're able to draw the right amount of weight. And I know people do do that with recurves. Let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, we shall undress in here and remove some mail. And here's the fun part that Caddy loves. She dearly loves this because we had so much trouble with the other mannequins and slipping your arms in and out. Woo! He's a stripper. And he comes a quick part quickly, and I think Shad will appreciate that as well. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's examine this first. We have some holes. There's a hole here. There's a hole right here. So that means we had to have hit there. Uh, we see some damage here because remember this has no damage on it when we started. But here, here, here. Of course, we know we went through here in a few places. One, I mean, the ones where it goes through the cloth and the pants and stuff and gets stuck but doesn't hurt the warrior, most people wouldn't believe that, but they have accounts of stuff like that happening and talk about it. An arrow sticking out of their, you know, their actual garments and not hurting them. And everybody thinks, well, oh, oh, that's movie stuff. No, it took place today. Especially with me trying the new method. I am sorry, but I didn't practice this. I'm not gonna lie to you. I told Chad I did a little practice. I came outside and shot a barrel a couple of times and went, ooh, I hit it, and decided to shoot this video. So hopefully I did this justice. Uh, I think that Shad has perfected it farther than me, or he's an ancient reincarnated warrior or something, which... I think that if you get some more plausible, then you get more and more accurate angles. Right. Uh, a case of... Sorry, I'm trying to get him undone here quickly. I don't want to take longer than we need. Use your knife. Yeah, well, we already got I'm getting all... Sticky. Uh -huh. Woo. Hey, 
we got him in the chest properly. He died here. Was that under male or above male? That was above That male. was under the mat. Oh, below the mat. Yeah, but I don't know if he died. The male this is off. really thick, and we don't know how it compares to human. Uh, I hate undressing a male. It would be much better if it was a female. I'm sorry, Michael. Why do you guys? Hey, there's an indent here that wasn't there before, yeah. too. And this is one that went into him. Like I said, this is the one where Shad would have lived. Hey, look. The pants hit him. Oh, yeah. Scored him. It scored him. So he would have been cut here. This went in about an inch. So if we want to say that ballistics gel and this flesh gives and stuff like that under it, this, he would have lived. And the flesh gives even more. So unless it was right over that bone, the uh, hip actual bone. hip bone, which might have stopped it too. Uh, here, I don't think it would have been deep enough to kill him. But I mean, that's a tricky half and how much compression you got, you know, you never know, but I doubt it. I don't think that would have killed him. Okay, there's one other thing I still want to check. But he's fine, we can still cut this out, make our, uh, our mold and fix him up. Okay, one other thing we need to check. What? Take off his sleeve. Oh, okay, see his can they hear me? That's the only question. Yes, they can hear okay. as far as I can tell. Oh, take off his sleeves. See, we had two shots of the shot right through that. And part of me, we bought this mannequin to make a easier to repair, better version. As you can see, there's nothing in it. Nothing in it. But, but yeah, he, he's not going to crack or split like the other mannequin. And the arm caught it well. So he could take a lot of hits like that before the arm started coming apart. And he's still got the sore. Yeah, and this arm was pierced all the way through, which I hate that because it is my new mannequin. And he's got a big broad forearm. Good deadlifter here. But yeah, it wants to hold the arrows, but it did well. It's what we bought it for, and it's doing this its job. It should last a lot longer than our old mannequins. Most certainly, most certainly. As long as you don't keep attacking the arrows. And anyway, like I would like to say, I'd like to thank everybody out there for watching the video and Shad for doing this uh, collaboration. I very much enjoyed it. It was something that right up my alley I wanted to do, and when he brought up the idea after I addressed him about his videos, I jumped at it. So thank you so much, Shad, at Shadversity. I'd like to thank Archie Bowman, because not only I, but Shad got our bows from uh, Archie Bowman on eBay, where it's got the nice little sign where it says Asian Court. And uh, he makes excellent bows. I highly recommend his bows. They are made in America. They're the most affordable bows. They're made out of hickory and different laminate composites. The main bow I used was all hickory. It was a self bow. So it is a true war bow at 130 pounds. And uh, I'd like to thank the other channels who are experiment with, experimenting with this as well, including Lars Anderson, because he's the one who brought this up. But I believe that it's plausible somebody used his method for quick speed archery and possibly even heavy bows, because it seems totally plausible. And uh, I believe there's another one called Mead Longbows, and he's been doing shots, but proving that it is very accurate, just like Shad did in this video. And anyway, as always, for Vettel. And hopefully we'll come back in a few weeks and test this after more practice. Most certainly, y'all. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can always support a Thane Thran YouTube channel shirt that you can get over at viralstyle.com at the Thane Thran Merchandise Store. We have coffee mugs, koozies, a wide variety of shirts and hats. You can also help support us on Patreon, and if you do that, you'll also get exclusive content that can only be seen there.